Hey folks, I'm here at Westbrook Supply Company in Atlanta, Georgia with Fletch, Mikey. We're rigging a Sholey with a Torquedo Ultralight 1103. So we're rigging for Drew Gregory. Drew Gregory, Drew the Gregory. one and only. It's gonna be his boat. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna rig up. We've already kind of laid everything out here. Uh, this is the standard way that you know you you set up the the ultralight. I'll go ahead and slap it there. We got somewhat of a challenge in putting the mounting bracket here. In the there's some tight spots up in here. You guys have any ideas? Uh, we we got a couple of strategies. We're plan A, plan B. Okay. So yeah. So we'll remove the handle, get this bracket on there, and then we're gonna do some other creative things. I know Drew's a river guy, loves the idea of having a rock guard. So it'll get the rock guard. But because this this particular boat is uh, is gonna go really shallow with Drew in it, we're gonna chop that profile. So the concept of chopping a profile is that wherever you place, this is a ring clamp. Um, really, it's whatever you place above the, the p black pivot drum, the, uh, they call this the rocker, sets how deep the motor is. So the, the gravity pulls the motor down and whatever, whatever this is set at is your depth. So we're kind of limited in, you can only get it down so far by how much how much profile there is. So we're gonna take this all apart. Yeah. You got a, you got a bandsaw? Yeah, man. We we're gonna chop it there. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna start chopping on this brand new motor. <laughs> exactly. And, and it's gonna allow Drew to go shallower yet uh, because it's, you know, the motor's gonna be there on the top of the, the rotation of the, the propeller instead of there. So yeah, I, I just I just want to say, Drew, uh, if this is, does not go well, this was Jeff's idea. So. My fault. <laughs> so there's some other things that are my fault that are going on over here. Um, this is going to become this along with you got a pipe, yeah, right there. Drew wants to stand and operate the the ultralight 1103. He'll probably try it at top speed. Um, <laughs> we, I was like, you have to have foot control steering um, because it's it's a lot of power and to punch up through the rapids is, is pretty important. So we're going to have foot control steering, but we will have, and, and I'm just going to wait on you to watch the video to see how this sticks to your, basically he's going to be standing up operating the the throttle and the steering from a standing up position. Part of operating the throttle is we have a Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount and this length is going to be replaced or maybe even added to with this Yak Attack 8 inch extension arm. So that the throttle instead of being somewhere in this position is going to be up here, we're gonna we're gonna swap the uh, foot pegs out. Put this, the the uh, sliding foot pegs there, and then we're gonna make for really easy um, easy motor lift with these pulleys. So, got some Ron stand pulleys, and we got a Harkin cleat, which this goes on top. I'm going to hold off and tell you about those stealth pulleys, <laughs> and we're going to dive in. Let's start with the, mount, the mounting bracket yeah. and go from there. Yeah. All right, well, these guys start working on removing the handle so we get the bracket on there. Let's take a look at what uh, Joe just put on. We got the boondocks landing gear with the Sholey kit, and this is like a little bracket or something for, I think we put the backpack here. Gives you some extra storage. Okay. Um, because this the boondocks landing gear goes across there, normally you set your backpack down in this. This elevates it and uh, gives it four points of contact here to uh, to set the black pack. It's kind of a cool setup. Yeah, you know these are the same ones they use like on sea kayaks and stuff like that when they they've got to mount foot pegs and it's sit inside. You know you got to drill through the exterior of the boat, so that's how they seal. So you're gonna take these neoprene washers 
put that back on there so it is watertight. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the inside actually. So we're gonna inside? yeah. So once the straw's up and seals, uh, that'll be a watertight, and then you'll just have the the hardware there. Okay. It'll look it'll look nice and nice and clean and stock. Right. Okay. Right. Marked. That'll work. All right. Thank it's, you. Uh, they're they're close. Like it's that's the tough part <coughs> is the gap here. If it would have come in a little bit more, and that's where it gets tricky. And and this is where in the past when you take a nut and you have it up in there, you, you thread it on there and it's tight, tight, tight and you got a flathead screwdriver and you just put that flathead screwdriver against one of those edges. Mikey's ready to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mikey's brave. Craig, Mikey just loves first, holes and boats. I do. First hole. That wasn't a brave hole though. The brave holes are these two. Oh, okay, well let me go one brave hole then. Serious? <laughs> Drew! Drew, love you. <laughs> so we can always put the bracket up there and sink one of those screws first and then... Yeah. That's perfect. There. So right. we'll, we'll run those and then... Uh... Wait. Let's explain it. Okay. <laughs> so we got this one threaded and started, but when we went in for this one, when we, we hit it with a good clean, which it's no longer clean, this is more oblong, it's not just a quarter inch. We had to mill it some because when we got up in there, there is no way that that's even fitting. So we've milled it in this direction. There's a different way that you can mill it and keep it clean. And by milling, I mean, and we're gonna do it a little bit just to show you what I mean. You can mill the torpedo bracket. We did the same as that, and we may have to end up doing more of it, but we did that with this to draw it this way. So if you just line all these up and go center punch and, and say, okay, sink them all right where they are, it's not gonna work. I mean, these are, I say these are fine. These need to be more in, and these right here need to, you know, th there's a narrow spot up in there. So it's, it's challenging inner geometry. And because it's rotomolded, it's an irregular surface. I mean, it's just, it's a boat that is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not uniform. The outside is uniform based on, on the mold that it's in. The inside, they're all a little bit different. They all get gooey in a little bit different ways. And you could have it a little bit thicker on one boat and a little bit thinner on the other. That's just the nature of rotomold. So we've milled this out in this direction. I think on this second one, we're gonna mill the bracket. And that's all right, you can, you can answer. Mm -hmm. So on this one, I think we're gonna mill it this way. And I think this one, we're gonna mill this one out. So milling in, milling out, yeah. Let's do some of that before we before we go any further. But we're eventually gonna, because we've already drilled this hole and we've made it oblong, we're gonna get some silicone in there. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. We've figured out that the the step bit is doing better work than just the side of the regular drill bit. We, as you can see here, this is kind of kind of gone oblong outward, and then this one's inward. Although that one I did with the regular drill bit, and I got to redo with the step bit. Step bit is seems to be the better tool for what we're doing. All right, so you can see this is not going to be square um, just because we got a, <clears throat> a turn here, a turn there, 
and then go ahead and lift it for a second. A point here where we need to come this way, and a point here where we already have one in, so that's that's going to be where it is, uh, and this is going to be where it is milled in. But these, you know, the new hole that we're going to do the center punch on there isn't going to be what we already did. It's going to be a little bit that way mm -hmm. to make it easier, and this one's going to be a little bit this way to make it easier. Go ahead and put it on there again, Mike. And that matches the milled out in this this direction and in that direction. And we did the same thing here. Pinching in, spreading out. So Fletch just handed me some of these washers. The sealed washers. <clears throat> sealed washers. So that's going to be a better um, seal. We're going to actually put that, go ahead and lift it, Mike. We're going to put that here and especially here let me get a second one because especially there because we milled it out some go ahead and lay it on top <coughs> and that should help when i get it through there seal up that milled out part of it on both sides so we got these two started we got these milled out this way and that way, and we're just gonna lean into that where that new hole is, okay? And then out in this direction. <laughs> so I got all four started, I think. Um, I can access these with a box wrench but once I get to the inner ones, it's so tight, I'm probably gonna have to jam a flat-headed screwdriver up against it and have someone turn from the top side. But they're all in and it's it's loose. And we got the the neoprene, the are there neoprene gaskets? Or neoprene washers. Yeah. Wash, yeah. We got these on all of them, so that's good. So we'll see if I can continue to tighten this down. Skip it, not biting it. Okay, that was something. Tight, tight, tight. Can you can you come from a directly underneath and just get the Yeah, try that. Alright, we got that one in. Now we're going in with the flathead screwdriver. And I'm gonna jam it in there. Fletch, if you can just start turning yeah. that one once I, I know that I'm on it. If I can feel this up against there. I'm really just trying to... I gotta come around the other side. This is... Mm. Okay, now I know... Stop. Now I know which side I have to wedge that flat surface in. Mikey's going to test it. So we're flexing the boat more than we're, than we're lifting up on here. I mean, it's we've all worked some of these from the inside and the out. And <laughs> everyone's, you know. It's is a, anyone bleeding yet? Uh, tight fingers, but no. <laughs> There's a little on my knuckle. All right. What are we moving on to next? You want to chop the uh, the profile over yeah. there? Yeah. All right. Let's take this apart. We're gonna take everything from there up off, and then this will slide up, and we'll. I I'm gonna tell you I can eyeball it. Honestly, it's gonna <laughs> match. It's gonna match what I've done. We'll use yours as a template. Right. 
but you know, four inches is a good is a good chop. You can get greedy and go five if you really have a low slung kayak. So we'll take that back to the uh, to the saw. Get it chopped. Get hit in the face with it. see this guy now there's a like a rubber gasket that sits there just leave that on there we just gotta mash it down after we we trim, trim some of that so it's a uh, it's an extrusion and uh, we we'll leave this plastic piece on there and uh, yeah about where my thumb is shall I cut yep okay So, what is that? Uh, three, three-ish yeah. inches, two and three-quarter yeah, that we took off of there. That is the, the extra, you know, shallow draft that, that Drew will be able to keep yeah. the, the motor operating. Shallow operation is such a critical thing with a lot of these shallow water fisheries. And, uh, you know... This is unlocking a little bit of shallow water use for the Torquedo Ultralight 1103. All right, we're sliding that back on and yeah, you got that. That's correct. Cause you got the, you got the plastic gasket facing up, right? That's, yes, that yep. is correct. And then the open end, it's gonna come down Make sure. on the rubber gasket that sits on top of the black football, which is the motor. Okay, you're gonna smash that down, and then we're gonna get the ring clamp that's, uh, yep, there it is. Send it down, Fletch. Here there it comes. It goes. Full send. All right, so I'm gonna give you these tools. Thanks. And you're gonna really, it's important that you're, you're both pushing down on it to compress that. Okay. And maybe I do that while I'm sitting here filming you do the do the tool work. Okay. I gotta get closer to get better. Yep. I'm just pushing down with that that gasket on the bottom. So <clears throat> you don't want to totally over tighten that, but you do want it so it's not gonna work its way up. I have a long history of breaking that hardware there like mm. just shearing the head off yeah don't I do go that. through like yeah hand tight yeah. like where it gets and yeah it's it's as long as this this is compressed and there's not like a little gap in there should we use the, good. Uh, the friction solution stuff for the what is that hmm? friction the solution. friction solution <laughs> the little stuff that comes with a little <laughs> packet no we're the, you're talking about the grip paste the grip paste yeah no we don't use it there grip paste uh, friction you solution <laughs> does the thing <laughs> it's uh yeah it's ca carbon paste carbon paste yeah, yeah. something like that yeah no uh no? We, we'll do that with the um the steering triangle the steering triangles right. is where that's most needed which we have a new one we got trey leach's design innovative sportsman bulletproof steering triangle so we're gonna yeah you can put the pivot drum on there and then we're gonna put Put this on over that, okay? Um, while we're here, just to make things fun for Drew, we might take these steering limiting pins out. I have mixed emotions. I don't always talk about on film that we remove those, mm -hmm. but I was actually out with someone on big water with the traditional, where's the old steering triangle? Do we got that around? I'll show you what happens. What can go wrong is, this little nub here can it can jump up and it ends up on this side and the motor's kicked all the way in one direction and you can't crawl back there in yeah, rough no. water and, and undo <laughs> it so you, you you can only do donuts <laughs> so 
We'll, we'll go ahead and get these out of there. They're uh, star bit torques. Let me see if I got one. Yeah, should be one of those. Try one of those. I'm gonna go with the one that's got uh, the most silver yeah. shown. Meaning it's been used. Meaning it's the right one. Yeah. <laughs> so what is this called again? Steering limiting pins. So we just took the rev limiter off, huh? Pretty much. <laughs> This this is what allows you to get the you know full turn radius. Yeah, probably about 170 degrees instead of whatever is on there. But yeah, I didn't talk about these on film for a long time because they were put there for a reason. But right. then I've seen where they've sort of sabotaged someone out on uh, in rough water, mm. like like Erie seven footers. All right, let's see if we can get. Yeah, take that. Apart. You can take that apart because yeah. we're going to use other parts of that, like the motor lift, and it's the motor lift can go on just the regular ring clamp. So you you got that on there, and this can actually be the part that adjusts um, the depth. So wherever you set this with the quick release, and and yeah, if you go right there. That's that's super shallow operation, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll let we'll let Drew start with that sh super shallow operation and leave this as high as you can get it. As high as as we can we can leave this. The longer the lever is, the easier it is to pull that up, especially with all these pulleys that we got coming. So we'll leave this guy way up there. But yeah, you really do want to hammer on that one. And this is where you use the carbon assembly paste if, if we want to. Is it up there? Uh, possibly. Okay. We've thoroughly fumbled through like calling this six different things, but look at it. What does it say? Assembly paste. Carbon dynamic. assembly paste. It's dynamic though. Dynamic carbon assembly paste. The other application for this is, you know, on a bicycle seat post that won't stay straight. Yeah. Sorry, what was that you said there, Jeff? What I was saying. So you gotta get some of the pink goo, get it right on your fingertip, jam that pink goo in there. Jeff is spreading his pink goo all over the shaft of this motor. <laughs> oh, day in the life of People the People are saying, something's wrong with Jeff. He's, his goo's pink. <laughs> right, I gotta loosen this. Okay. I gotta wipe this on my pants. Oh, that's sorry. I got some. Get you a paper towel. Some Kleenex. Mm -hmm. So, the rationale behind how deep you go, and I, and I think I don't know where's where's the water line gonna be on this with Drew Gregory and you know two rods and six jackhammers. Uh, I think it's gonna be like there. So we're still, that's just my guess. Uh, even if it's a little higher and he wants to go shallower, he can lift this quick release block and get it up here. But I think this is probably good. Now, if you get out into big water, if you get out into where you have wind driven waves and you're pitching and rolling over stuff, as, as the back of the boat comes up, this lifts up and it's not good. And you're in deep water with waves. You open this up and drop this sucker all the way down. That's why you have quick release. And that's why you want this much adjustment for fishing shallow water fisheries. We can go even shallower or deep water fisheries where we maintain a bite of the prop because we get the motor deep as we pit, you know, roll over those uh, wind driven waves so this is a good starting point we're going to go ahead and i guess move towards the the front and get the foot control steering going all right mike is removing the stationary foot peg track this is going to come off and we're going to replace it with this is the innovative sportsman foot control steering kit it has the sliding foot pegs and the track that goes in it and it looks like like this Moving ahead quickly, putting that track there. It also has, go for it, man, the um, spectra cord that links the back of these to 
ultimately to the steering triangle back there and assuming that we're going to run through the hole that the spectrum cord goes in. It comes with <laughs> While the cameraman just sitting there watching yeah. us, you know. Thank you, Trey, <laughs> for providing the appropriate hardware. Yeah. So, Fletch and Mike like to rig race. Yeah, they just, one picks one side, one picks the other, and, and <clears throat> who usually wins? Uh, you know, it's 50 50. Is it? Yeah. Not really. It's always. <laughs> <laughs> So, we're going to rig race with the, uh, hey, oh sorry, hey, Robin's racing. We'll, we'll rig race with that tubing down there. What do you think? How's that going to go? Mm. That's something you probably shouldn't rush. No. <laughs> Plumbing's a job that uh, needs to be done right instead of right now? Yeah. A little bit of an instruction there. Kind of had to wedge it in beyond that little nub. I was using it the old-fashioned kind, and I still right there with it. Yeah, you were. Uh, yeah, just depending on how we set this up, uh, there's a little bit of a stop here, so we may look at put some spacers behind here to get that clear. Well, I must say this much: um, the furthest throw that you need. is going to match how far back this goes with full rotation to how far forward it goes. So I don't think we're doing much more than maybe seven inches. You want to measure it? Because that that's the travel of the tip of this is going to match the travel that you need of wherever the foot peg is. And I think it does kind of stop there. I think you're right there. The other thing you can do is take these off and cut a section off. I think we could. I'm always about cutting things. So. All right. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do it that, that way then. Yeah. If we can cut it. We can cut you it shorter. Chop it. Cut it. Like, and then the cut peg it. here. And then now you got. Because then you'll have more room space, right? How much do we cut? Question. He's closer to your stature. Do you want to sit this on the ground and? and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna want to check, make sure you know. Yeah. Cause well, he told us his height. He said he's five eight, so that's the same as height as mine. Okay. Which means, yeah. But I don't know if five seven and three quarters. Or... But uh, <laughs> believe it, I only could say that because anyway. Uh, seven, yeah, no, we just want to make sure. Yeah, because you don't want to have to be tippy toeing this thing, especially with the power that. I would tell you. I mean, out. I got a thirty six inch inseam here. And I usually chop these That's a nice darn one. near in half. Nice and, humble brag. And they're, okay. they're, yeah. <laughs> I chop in half, but in half is we're, not. We're all impressed at how tall you are, Jeff. Right. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make all these kayaks for folks that are my stature. Anyhow, so. I'm, I'm going to say, let's just play it safe and... Three notches. Yeah, three notches I think is good. Well, we can we can screw it up twice. Yeah, so these are the old ones. So let's, let's let yeah. me go run. We can screw it up twice? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's go cut it up. <laughs> So one of the one of the things that Drew expressed concern in terms of where we run the spectrocord is right. he doesn't want the line going across there in in obscuring messing with his photos. He doesn't want a tournament judge to say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! You got things in the way blocking. I can't tell if it fish's nose is touching the fence." That sort of thing. Right. So, um, for where you put the catch board. You know, we got to run these lines straight. So, what do you think the? <coughs> excuse me. Bless you. What do you think the slash the the solution to the issue is? Well, I mean, with it having about seven and three quarter inches of of cord, you know, the best thing to do is kind of pull it to the side, 
loosen it up a little bit right. and you got yourself a little bit of clearance you know that's the best option and solution that we've seen for having the, the cable steer solution yeah. but just having that out of the way you know still good it, it, it is critical <coughs> you'll make it yes yeah, sorry i All just right. need something to drink. so we do want the the line running straight as possible even you know including the the tubing where's our tubing you want the tubing to run straight. We have this cup holder as an obstruction. So I think it's gonna run on the outside there. Yeah. So from from that attachment point to somewhere in the middle here, I think is good. And then it runs on that side. And then coming here to the back, we got the frog eyes. And they're gonna run straight up to this. So you guys ready yes. to run tubing? Let's do it. All right. No. No? Just kidding. <laughs> Big hatch. All right, so we're going to tie this to one of these carabiners. Hook it up, throw that, you know, once it's on there, we're going to steer it all the way forward. Get the forward most so without it actually smacking that. That's the stop. And uh, then we do the other side. Show us how it's done, Jeff. Yeah. I mean, you, you, we got stuff to work with, you know? Do you, do you wrap down on it or you wrap up? Down. Down. But I've done it either way. I mean, they, they should all work. That's not enough. I know already. I need more. And I'd say you should wrap tight and you kind of pull up on these, but like it should tighten down as you're, as you're going. I'm kind of snugging that upward to keep them tight. That tugs up like that. That comes down. Huh? I did the opposite. All right. The other thing you got um, here, these. Just. I I do like though that you use the pad eye to tug it, but I just pull that out. Now I'm gonna adopt your test of. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick up. Yeah, I'm picking up the boat with it. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Okay, so we clip this to that. Yep, that looks good. Straighten this out. It's going to come all the way forward. Look at it. Just kind of scoot it all the way forward. And this is going to go... I want it shy of here because I don't want it to stretch and bang into that because that is annoying to me. I don't like noise. It scares away fish and not good. What was that? I couldn't hear you. I was talking about spooking fish. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't hear over the bang. No. Okay. But I'll do the same thing here, but the, the spacing of it, we're just doing it, you know, to be forward most throw. I think I'm gonna stop there. And we still got our travel, yes? Yeah. I mean what's what's that? That's that's more than we're gonna need, yes. It's more than seven and three quarters. Yes. That is almost ten inches. Okay. And I'll just throw whatever I got on there. I mean it it's gonna be more than the minimum of six. I'll just eat up that that length. That's good enough. Poke that through. Tighten it down. Move to the next side. And then we start working on an apparatus for 
steering while standing up. All right, so we have this the rear, you know, the steering triangle here pulled all the way forward, and what this did is brought the side we did all the way back. And I, let's just go let go for a second, and I'm going to show you when I pull back on this. It goes eh, just a little bit further than that the end of the track, but it doesn't bang into that. Like I got it to stop shy of banging into that. So what I would say is go all the way forward and make it almost to there because you're going to get some stretch. Yeah, a little further, a little more there. Yeah. So tie on that and you'll have that. Yeah, go that side. You, you want me to do it? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to do it? I can do it. I just have to stand that way because it's kind of tying, kind gotcha. of a weird tying a knot upside down. Isn't yeah. It? There we go. All right. Okay, we got foot control steering. Mike, give me a demonstration. All right. Smooth, powerful, full. Rotation. Good. Do it again. Do it again. So this boat is going to whip around like a top. We got something to add though. Yes. So we got these Yak Attack Stealth pulleys that we're going to put there and there to close the loop. So basically, the loop right now is a big U, but we're going to make it an O because we're going to run it through those pulley there, pulley there. It's going to be closed looped because we're going to figure out a way to get a stick steer on one of these pedals so that he can be standing up, moving this back and forth like that. Make sense? Makes Make sense. sense. Okay. I need, I'm going to start working on, on the Spectra to make the loop. What I want you guys to do is we're going to chop that part of it off because if you look at the path, it's fitting in that tight little spot there and um, it's, it's going to, the cord's going to come off of there where I've already started. It's going to come here, hit that pulley, run across, hit the pulley there and then connect to that one. Yeah. Right. Full circle. Start working on it. All right. Chop her up. All right. It's the next day. What are we doing, man? Uh, I, honestly, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not really <laughs> sure. I don't either. <laughs> so we both kind of slept on it and thought through and realized. I, I mean, this closed loop system has has worked for me in the past, sort of. For a stick steer that was like a back and forth like windshield wiper type deal it's a little bit different by the way this is the, the stick that i've made i got a rubber stopper threaded rod here th threaded quarter 20 uh this pipe that was part of part of what a native like it was the foot for a native the uh work tube for a uh pedal drive uh yeah propel drive yeah uh another rubber stopper threaded the quarter 20 rod into the uh the, the screw ball and then another screw ball through these connectors so whatever this could be the stick steer how it actually connects and works uh we're debating you know, I, I, the, the original thought was, hey, we just run this through there and we kind of shift this back and forth straight up and down. It, it, it just requires too much force to just have a, have a, you know, it works with the legs. All right, a little bit of a status update. We've tried some different things here. Um, the, the stick steer experiment with it attached to, to the knob there. Sorry. Now you're good. This right here. Uh, Mike hopped up there and it just wasn't the right leverage to do it. So what we're doing is Mike is uh, 
sealing up the holes where we had the, the pulleys there and we're going to instead use some, some of these parts for the low pro wing knobs. Essentially we're going back to what I did the first time with the, the inflatable. Um, getting rid of those pulleys because we're going to bring the spectra cord up at an angle and then back down almost like a tent shape here. Um, we're going to get this uh, mighty mount here. Uh, put a ball on it. Yeah. Like that. And then this stick steer is going to go back and forth like the windshield wiper type deal. Steering left and right with the spectra cord coming up. I, I bet none of that made sense. I bet, I bet that was just like... <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're trying different things and they're, we're getting there and Mike's playing with a torch and a spoon there we go so Fletch is back there drilling through the stick steer and he's continuing to work on that um, we're in a little bit of a time crunch so I'm jumping ahead to the motor lift and <clears throat> I'm going to show you the parts that I have here just with the motor lift and one of them is already here. So these are actually um, pulleys made by Ron Stan and I've connected to just the carabiner that comes with the motor there. So that's going to be here at the back and it'll, it'll attach there, loop up, go through that. We're going to have a Yak Attack tie down eyelet right about there and the line's going to come up this way and it's going to loop around I think I want to go here. It's going to be a hard mount to leave his track open um, to this same Ron Stan. Let me show you this. I've used the Harkin ones but th these are Ron Stan and uh, man it's RF663. It is a 19 millimeter single block is what that's called. So it's uh, it's good for up to 100 and no 330 pounds. So you know we're lifting a 20 pound motor, not 330 pounds. So these are good. So I'm gonna hardwire that there. I'm gonna put this actually is a Harkin cleat that's gonna go there, and he's gonna pull straight up like that. All right. So we'll see that here in just a second. I'm in the do it mode. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, so yeah, we drilled a couple of holes in this uh, and we're going to use some of these blind rivets to attach these stainless steel pad eyes on here. So we will have some firmly locked in uh, places to tie in that control cable. So as this moves left and right, push and pull. Uh, that's the theory anyway. Uh, there you know, we go. We're figuring it out as we, we go along. That's good. Where am I? Suck it in and stick it up. Yeah. It'll make me call Nick at the fire captain. All right, full on Captain Morgan, go. <laughs> All right, this is the shakedown cruise for uh, for the Sholey with the stick steer and. We've cleared everything out because, uh, you know, it's uh, it's highly likely that I will end up in the water. <laughs> Not totally, but uh, I will say that the of, of all the different fishing kayaks out there, you know, the narrower they are, the more challenging it is for, um, for you to stay upright. Then you add power to it, you know, in a stick steer that we haven't tested. I'm a little nervous, tiny bit, but I do want to know, hey, is this is this going to work? Um, I think the application is is certainly more for for flat water application, but we're on a river, so we're going to try it here in current. Here goes. <laughs> so 
So we are switching the uh, drag strap to the, the attachment point here and it becomes a stand assist strap. Let's kind of take it through there. And actually, before we take off, let's take a um, just a closer look at the components of the stick steer. Uh, the base is a mighty mount and we have a screw ball attached to it and the linkage you know, to another screw ball that's at the base of this, this shaft. There's a threaded rod that goes right up through the center. We put this, this handle on there and just capped it with a low profile um, quarter, 20, um, quarter 20 lock nut. And then we have the, the stainless steel pad eyes on the side to the carabiners and then the spectra cord that goes all the way to the the foot pegs and i'm going to move it with my feet for now to show you that's the side to side action at the back of the boat the motor is going side to side where whenever you do it there is going to be slack on one side uh because in, in essence as you go you know as you go forward on one side you're pulling the whole system from you know basically from i'd say what 11 o'clock all the way back over <laughs> to the other side of the clock it's uh it's a long pull so but it is working and uh i'm gonna try to go up right with this and show you what i got Off. I think we're gonna have to get an extension for the magnet. <laughs> there we go. So it's working. Clearly I'm crouched down. We built this for Drew and he's a little shorter, so but yeah, it's a functional system. So I'm gonna come up at full speed here. Oh, here's the kill switch. Mm. Need that longer kill switch. it out. I'm pretty happy with that. I know Drew will for sure be happy with that. Now, start building it for myself. Obviously, this would be longer and I'd probably get another extension here um, on the Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount. We did the uh, Fletch, this is what the eight inch. The eight inch extension. I'd yeah. probably leave the original four inch that's in there, and I'd have it up here for me. Um, but certainly, you can add add more as you need to. So, I think it's a success. So, what do you guys think? I I've never seen one before. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I think it, it it's a pretty neat setup. Yeah, that handled it pretty aggressively. Yeah. Yeah. Cool.